Okay, for this 7203 tutorial, I wanna go through a sample a scenario where we have a shareholder that has a capital gain inclusion when they receive a distribution in excess of their stock basis. So our shareholder here, Jane Doe, she is a shareholder in an S corporation. And during the 2022 tax year, she received a cash distribution just like all the other shareholders did. Uh, but the distribution exceeded her stock basis in the company so she has to recognize some long-term capital gain so uh, let me go over everything we've got in front of us and then we'll uh, look at the detailed rules and then get into this fact pattern so i do have the 7203 for jane here this is for 2022 and it's part of her full return so i've got the schedule e up here and then the rest of the 1040 and so we'll go into those in more detail so the 7203 we have I do have the 2021 K1 for Jane. So this is her K1 last year where she first became a shareholder. And this is important because what we're gonna see in 2021 is that the losses basically reduced her basis to zero going into 2022. And then we have the 2022 Schedule K1 from the business. So we'll take a look at this as well. And then I have a slide here uh, covering the rules and then just outlining the fact pattern again. So. Let's look at the rules here and what we need to be mindful of and then we'll look at the fact pattern and then the returns and forms themselves. So when we talk about shareholder stock basis, our initial basis is the capital contribution to the company in exchange for the stock, right? So uh, if a company issues you shares and then you have to pay them funds for those shares, that's the initial capital contribution. That's an increase to your basis. Now after that event, your stock basis is adjusted under a, a set uh, rigid kind of rule rule book about uh, ordering, right? And so if we look at Treasury Reg section 1.1367-1F, these are the default ordering rules so how, for how we adjust our stock basis up and down. So our basis is initially increased by any income, so positive amounts of income and excess depletion. After we account for those items, it's decreased by non-dividend distributions, right? So that's what we have in our fact pattern here. We have a decrease in basis because of non-dividend distributions. And then after that, we decrease our basis by non-deductible, non-capital expenses. And then we account for items of losses and deductions. Now remember, your, your S corporation stock basis can never get below zero. So as you're making these adjustments, as soon as you hit zero, uh, you have carryover amounts perhaps, but you can't become negative, right? So you can't have a negative stock basis. Now, what do we do in particular with respect to item two, non-dividend distributions? Well, for an S corporation that has no accumulated EMP, so accumulated earnings and profits for an S corporation, would happen, for example, if it was previously a C corporation. If you have a new S corporation that's always been an S corp, you're not gonna have EMP, right? That's a C corporation concept. And so in most cases, people are dealing with this kind of fact pattern, right? They have an S corporation that has no accumulated EMP. If you were previously a C corp, perhaps a different story, right? There's different ordering rules for, for distributions. But if you have an S corporation with no EMP, Distributions are taxed using basically a two-tier approach. All right, so if we're looking at Internal Revenue Code Section 1368B, it outlines these rules. So first, the distribution is a reduction to your basis and it's not included in your income. So as a shareholder, when you receive a distribution from an S-Corp, it's generally just a tax-free return of capital. That means it reduces your basis in the company, the amount of, or the stock rather, but the amount of cash you receive, that, that in and of itself is an income. Now, after that's accounted for, if you have a distribution that exceeds your stock basis, right, the excess is gonna be treated as a gain from the sale or exchange of stock, right? And this is, this is you can find this in 1368B. So the excess is gonna be treated as a capital gain, and it's gonna be either short-term or long-term, depending on your holding period of the S Corporation stock. So let's look at our fact pattern here, and we'll see how this works through from 2021 to 2022 and where everything needs to be reported on your form 1040. So Jane, 
Uh, and this is in 2021. She contributed $6,000 of cash to become a shareholder in this S Corp. On her 2021 K1, she had non deductible expenses of $9,000 and ordinary losses of $15,517. So a lot of expenses and a lot of losses that are reducing her basis. Now the non-deductible expenses reduced her basis to zero. So remember, uh, the capital contribution increases the basis, and then after we do the increases for income items, non-deductible items are um, applied first, and then we would apply any ordinary losses after that no distributions in 2022 so basically her stock basis was reduced to zero and she'll have a carryover of this 15,517. now when we fast forward to 2022 jane received a shareholder distribution of seven thousand dollars and her k1 shows she had an allocation of ordinary income five thousand six hundred fifty eight dollars and non-deductible expenses of 622. so jane's basis in the uh, S corporation stock is increased by her positive amounts of income, right? The 5658. But then the distribution is a reduction to her basis. And what we'll see here is that the distribution reduces her basis not just to zero, but beyond zero. And that's where she has the long term capital gain recognition. All right, so let's look at the, the returns in the K-1s here. So 2021, let's start here. So this is her K-1 from 2021. And you can see here, she's got the losses up here, some interest income, and then the line 16 C items are the non-deductible expenses, right, the $9,000. So if we look at her basis reconciliation, uh, this is the one prepared by the S Corp, but it, but it matches what she saw on her personal return. She has the increase of $6,000 to her basis there, that's fine. $21 increase for the interest uh, income. So $6,021 was her basis before accounting for non-deductible items. So because the non-deductible items were 9,000, that amount completely eliminated her basis. So that's why on this reconciliation here, we see that her stock basis at the end of the year, line 11, is just zero, right? Because her basis has been completely depleted. So when we look at the carryover schedule, we can see that, okay, there's the line one ordinary losses of 15,517. So that's the total loss. But the amount that we were able to claim in the current year is zero. We weren't able to claim any of these losses uh, because our basis is zero. So we had to roll for those losses to the next year. So when we look at our K-1 for 2022, now the numbers change a little bit and then they had a better year, right? So she's got profits now uh, in 2022, some more interest income. And then in line 16, C and D items, we can see that she's got some non-deductible expenses again, much less than the prior year, $622 but she has a 16D line item for the distribution, so $7,000 in distributions. Now, when we look at the basis reconciliation for this year, right, this is our 2022 basis, the stock basis at the beginning of the year is zero, right? That, that is what was rolled forward from the prior year, right? Because remember, her stock basis was completely eliminated because of all those non-deductible expenses. So she has a zero stock basis for the year, she has increases for the positive amounts of ordinary income, positive amounts of interest. So her stock basis leading up into, we have uh, distributions and the non-deductible expenses. So she's got a $5,728 stock basis. And then here's our reduction for the distribution, right? Report on line five. So $7,000 obviously exceeds her $5,728 stock basis. So that's why she has this capital gain inclusion, right? Her, her distribution exceeds her stock basis for the year. So we see these numbers again being reported when we actually look at her return. So now let's finally get into the 7203 and we can see how all this gets pulled together. So we have the 7203 for her. She's an original shareholder. And again, here we can see her stock basis at the start of 2022 is zero because last year her basis was completely reduced to zero because of the non-deductible expenses. Now, the basis is increased by these ordinary business profits, right? 5,658, it's increased by the interest income of $70. And so we get to line five, stock basis before distributions. And then we see on line six, 
the amount of distributions coming out of the company, so $7,000. And so as the 7203 highlights for us here, if line six is larger than line five, subtract the two and report the result as a capital gain on 8949 and Schedule D. Now before we look at that, I want to touch on part three. So in part three, again, here's the carryovers, right? Remember, last year she had losses of 15517 uh, but we can see it's being reported again here in column B as a carryover amount from the prior year because she wasn't able to use any of those losses. So she has losses coming over from the prior year, uh, profits this year, so no losses from the stock basis. So the carryover amount continues. So that, that 15517 that continues to be rolled forward to the next year. Now, as far as the capital gain amount, again, this is reported on 8949 and then ultimately Schedule D. So if I, if I jump up here to 8949, we have part two, long-term transaction. And this is box F, long-term transaction that's not reported on a 1099B, right? So there was no actual sale here. So you wouldn't receive a 1099B. What we have is a capital gain inclusion because of an excess uh, distribution. So in the description, we put excess distribution the name of the company, Fake Marketing Business LLC and the EIM. And then the proceeds are the gain, right? So the proceeds here, 1,272, that is the difference between 7,000 minus 5728, right? So that's how we're getting that capital gain amount. So 1,272 cost basis is zero. So the net amount of gain here, $1,272 is our uh, capital gain inclusion because the distribution exceeded our stock basis. And then of course that's ultimately passed up uh, to Schedule D here, right, in Part 2 long-term section. Now notice, in spite of the capital gain inclusion, everything else largely remains the same, right? So we're still reporting the pass through income or loss, right, in Part 2. So we have Part 2, the income from the, the S-Corp, right, S for S-Corporation. We are attaching a basis computation because we had a distribution in excess of basis, so, so it is required. And then here on uh, in column K, we can see non-passive income. So we had a positive amount of non-passive income of 5,658, right? That's the line one uh, K1 amount, right? Line one ordinary business income uh, coming through from the company in the current period, right? So that's the same, uh, none of those change. What's also important to highlight, again, are the carryovers. So at the beginning of the year, we did have a roll forward of the, the unused losses, 15,517. And that, again, it continues to be a disallowed loss in the current year. Now, what's also really, really important to remember here is just because you record a capital gain on the excess distribution does not mean you get an increase to your stock basis. So Jane's stock basis is still zero, even though she recorded the $1,200 capital gain. That happens outside of the basis computation. So, and, and again, that's because your basis cannot be reduced to zero, or sorry, cannot be reduced below zero. So you have to record a capital gain just to keep it at zero. That's effectively how this is working. All right, so that covers it for this video. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.